Hello again guys, Mike King Cordero here bringing you another vintage computer review. This is the Tandy 3000 HL personal computer. It's a pretty standard 286 clone, although it obviously didn't sell very well because there's not a whole lot of information online and uh, none available on eBay and none in the history that I've seen. So uh, I got kind of a unique computer here. It's a little bit strange. It's more unique in the fact that it has not one, but two hard drives in it. <laughs> two 5.25 hard drives of the AT variety. Originally it came with two of these and nothing else. So somebody spent a great deal of money upgrading it. This machine was originally sold in the late 80s. I don't know exactly when because like I said there isn't a whole lot of information on it. But it was basically to compete with IBM and Compaq and the rest of those. And uh, it seems to be fairly standard. It doesn't have the Tandy Special Graphics that the Tandy 1000s had, or the Tandy Special Sound, as far as I can tell. It's just pretty bog-standard PC clone. It had a 80286 processor clocked at 8 megahertz. That can be switched down to a 4 megahertz uh, speed to run the older software for PCs. Originally, it came with 512 megabytes of, or 512K of RAM, sorry, and could be upgraded all the way up to four megabytes of RAM, which is kind of crazy for such a system. Um, originally it came with a 287 8 megahertz math coprocessor and like I said two of those floppy disk drives. They were the 360k variety of the double-sided 40 tracks each. Now if we go ahead and turn this machine around here, you'll see on the side, besides this huge stain here, which I don't seem to be able to get off, I, I didn't really try very hard to be honest, um, but it has a pretty standard power supply, AT style, and if we go around to the back here, you'll see it is very standard in that it has the 5 pin, or is it 9, nine pin DIN keyboard, it has parallel port printer, your power switch, and then your uh, power in obviously. This is your CGA video card and we'll see that again when I crack it open and this is a serial cable of the 25 pin variety. Now you can get an adapter with this and then use a mouse on this system if you wanted to. Um, it says in the spec sheet here from Radio Shack that it could run DOS or OS2 although OS2 on a 286 I don't know I thought it was supposed to run on later systems but I could be wrong, I don't have much experience in these old machines. My speciality is 90s machines because that is the era I grew up in. If we go ahead and remove this, you'll see on the inside it is very, very clean and uh, pristine. It was well cared for. It has on here, I'm pretty sure it had a clock battery on here. Uh, maybe not. It does not actually appear to. Anyway, so I was wrong. But if we go ahead and look at some of the cards that are in this thing. Ah, come on. Out you go. Move the screw. And pull it out. We can see that it is a... STB Super Res 4000. So like I said, this is too high of a resolution for my early monitors. Um, you would need something a little bit lower end than this uh, to use those monitors. So let me go ahead and slap this guy back in there. And we can take a look at some of the other cards. Uh, such as this card. And this is our serial card. This is actually labeled Tandy. So I'm guessing this is our original. Now hopefully all these cards are original, but I don't know about that video card. That seems a little high-end. Now this is your Tandy serial card. Uh, it is an ISA card. Um, I 8-bit ISA, obviously. 25-pin, uh, like I said before. You just slot it back in there. Ugh. And uh, if I go ahead, I daren't take this out because I'll never get it back in the same. So let me just grab the camera here and I'll show you this card up close and personal. Now this is your controller card for the hard drives and the uh, floppy disk drive. I would never be able to get this thing back in the same way again, so I'm not even bothered taking it out. Um, I have a notoriously hard time with these connectors because they don't 
They're not well labeled, I don't think. Ah, in the past I have, yeah, look at that. See, tell me which side's up and down on that. What are you supposed to do? So if you didn't take pictures ahead of time, you can easily mix that up. So uh, I would be careful of that. There's your beeper speaker. Ah, there's the clock battery right there. And there's a lithium ion battery. And as far as I know, it seems to be fully intact and in good order. Now, these machines have a proprietary power supply, of course. What would be a OEM manufacturer without proprietary parts? Over here, if we look, you can see that someone has kindly included the map for all of the hard drive errors. Now, that is not something that is unusual, I've heard, for hard drives. They usually mark it right on the hard drive, but we have here a printout of all the bad sections in the drive. It was inevitable that there would be bad drive or bad spots in a drive, and you just mark those when you set the drive up. If we look over here on the power supply, you can kind of see what somebody did when they added this stuff here. You can see the BIOS upgrade, uh, hard drive card to five. So that was on um, February 5th of 1988, I'm guessing, from that run right there. Um, what is that? Check. It looks like it says check out. That's kind of odd. So, yeah. So that is uh, a parts list of things that were added to this machine. I don't really know what checkout is supposed to be, unless that is that serial card or something, or not exactly sure. But at any rate, it's pretty interesting. Now, as you can see, I put the cover back on here, and I just wanted to look at one more thing here. Originally, I thought this was the power button, because of the fact that it has the power LED labeled power right there. But this is, in fact, the reset button, and that confused the hell out of me when I first went to go buy it, because I thought it was broken. Um... However, it seems, it works perfectly fine, like I said. So, just as a proof of what I'm saying here, let's go ahead and plug it in and show it booted up. Or at least on, to show that it does indeed start up. So, here we go. It's not that hard drive. <laughs> And you can hear it working. Doing a drive seek. Beep beep. I was probably asking for CMOS or something. CMOS date or know, something. Maybe that was just it counting its RAM. But at any rate, it does power on, like I said. So that is the Tandy 3000 HL personal computer. I'm sorry about such a short video and the fact that I couldn't show it in action, but um, again, uh, I don't have a monitor at the moment to do that, so this guy's going to have to go back on the back burner. I thought I'd just finally bring it to you guys, because um, I kind of have a lot of these sitting around, not done and not completed uh, to the best of my uh, desires, but I thought I'd just bring it to you anyway in case uh, something happens and I have to get rid of these machines or or anything. So yeah, I'm Ed King Corduroy and hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it a little bit educational, a sort of edutainment if you will. Um, thank you for watching and uh, please like and subscribe, leave a comment and check out my other videos because they're probably more interesting than this one was and I actually show the computers in action. So yeah, thank you for watching.